Hello and welcome. Alan Plum here again with a little more from Shed Engineering. And in this video I'm continuing my look at how cloth or material can be used in modelling. In my last video uh, I used uh, one piece of stretchy material dipped in cheap building plaster to create this quarry and rock face and that worked very well considering it was uh, one piece of cloth and just a quick demonstration. So this time I'm looking how toweling material could be used to simulate grass or crops. But first a very quick easy and cheap waterfall. Now in previous videos I've shown how cling film, plastic bags and polythene can be used to simulate water none of which I consider to be complicated or skillful or even expensive for that matter and noticing a crevice running up the uh, rock face I thought I may as well just show this as another example Now please try and appreciate this only came about purely by accident. The crevice is hardly uh, wide enough or deep enough. Ideally you need to be planning for something like this while you're laying down the plaster cloth obviously so that there's a bit more depth for the plastic to go into even though I'm only trying to represent a little rivulet running off uh, the uh, rocks after a heavy rainstorm or something like that. Now I'm using a strip of plastic torn from a carrier bag so it's the slightly opaque plastic. Both sides have been pasted with rocket card glue and that goes very very tacky as it dries uh, and obviously I've pasted down the rock face uh, as well and you can just work that into position. I did have a problem with uh, glue on my fingers pulling the plastic out but dabbing your fingers on a cloth with uh, white spirits on helps solve that problem. And I actually think the piece of plastic I've got there could have been about half the width that it is. You can get some quite nice flowing ripples and get the rock showing through from underneath which is quite nice. You would probably get a, a much better result or overall look if it was a grassier hillside so that you could have some foliage along the edge. But at the end of the day it costs next to nothing and it's one of those things worth having at the back of your mind because when it's as simple as this you could probably find that a, a tiny little stream could fit into the landscape quite easily without taking up a lot of room but it would add uh, a lot of interest and even if you're a novice or a beginner I'm sure something like this should be easy enough to try and I did the same a bit further along and it's only by working and experimenting with such materials that you get a feel for them and then gain confidence and think yes that'll work on my layout in such and such a situation. Now as I said because I was experimenting with cloth soaked in plaster I started to wonder how toweling material or cloth might be used in modelling. Now I was modelling in N-gauge and even though I haven't used static grass I can see from the videos most static grass is way too tall for N-gauge plus the fact it's very expensive unless you make your own applicator which might be a bit uh, complicated and daunting for anyone just starting out. So again this is very simple and very cheap. I'm using more or less everyday materials. No searching online for 27 exotic materials of different length and different colour just to do a grass field. I'm just using toweling material the one with tufts rather than loops and the cheapest children's poster paint 
at about a pound a tube and as you can see I'm just painting the toweling brown to represent the earth and soil now I know most modelers using static grass go to the trouble of putting down a ground colour but from what I've seen once the static grass is applied there is hardly any ground colour left showing through now if you're just wanting a grass field that's fine it looks brilliant but it's hardly representative of crops like peas carrots or young sugar beet or potatoes etc and as I've said static grass is hardly an option if you're modeling in n-gauge whereas this seems to be alright uh, for both n-gauge or double O I've obviously glued the piece of material down using PVA and it's best if you let the uh, material and brown paint dry and then as you can see I'm just using a fan brush to apply neat greens and browns to the tufts of toweling material now obviously I'm biased but I reckon that's giving quite a nice effect now in this next demonstration it's a different material this was like a microfiber dishcloth but it's got a very distinct weave giving the lines and furrows and uh, probably even extra cheap because it looks as if it's got two fault lines running across it but I'm using the same technique of painting it brown first letting it dry and then applying different greens and yellows to the tufts. Obviously the strong weave pattern uh, gives what I think is a brilliant representation of rows of vegetables in a farmer's field and I'm trying to uh, vary the painting doing a solid green section to try and show you the different effects you can get in just a few minutes. There's uh, nothing expensive, nothing complicated nothing requiring years of practice or skill but I think this is looking very effective and I'm sure the edges can soon be disguised with field boundaries of hedges or walls scatter and turf etc now because the cloth or field has been taken out of its true context and isolated on the bench without any surrounding landscape it might be easy to look at this demonstration and see just a painted dishcloth but I'm hoping you've got a little bit more imagination than that and you can see it in its true context and being part of a much bigger landscape the tractor is N-gauge and I think it sits very nicely in the field no huge tufts of vegetation coming halfway up the wheels and the pickup truck is double O and I think uh, looks equally at home so if you think about it just a couple of videos ago I was questioning the cost of proprietary brands of plaster cloth just a few inches wide and presumably made with so, such a, uh, an open weave it's got hundreds of holes in it forcing you to uh, buy more and apply more that led me to thinking and it led me to experiment with any stretchy cloth just dipped in cheap building plaster and using one piece nearly two meters long I was able to do an entire rock face in one piece now having seen the results of the painted toweling surely it uh, raises the question do we need the first application of plaster cloth because I'm sure it must be possible to apply a coat of plaster to the back of uh, some toweling apply that to your landscape and hey presto straight away you've got uh, your grass texture ready for painting excuse my language but words like bugger come to mind because that means another demonstration 
but I uh, can't do that now seeing as it's uh, half past eleven at night so that'll have to wait do you want me to get Sergei to clean your van out? No, thank you. But seriously, Alan, I don't think you should have weed in your van. Well, I think we can safely say that failed miserably. Aye, lad, stick to the Yorkshire accent they were born with. Right, ya. Yeah. Now, I just mentioned having edge row round, round your fields to cover our edges. Now don't they be buying expensive modelling junk. They can soon get some weeds out at garden and soak, uh, soak the roots in uh, white PVA and let them dry off right good. They can soon make this end some trees and bushes. So for small trees and bushes ideal for hedgerows just pull weeds up out of sandy soil or a gravel drive soak the roots in watered down PVA and let dry then reapply PVA or hairspray and add some proprietary scatter or turf now don't waste the small bits of root you think are no good use them for a hedgerow uh, cut two strips of material this toweling is actually a bit too thick but it was to hand Lay down the roots along the uh, material, run hot glue along the other strip and sandwich them firmly together and the uh, strip can actually be cut down with strong scissors once it's dry and scatter or uh, turf added along the edge of that to make uh, a little bit of a bank under the hedgerow. I'm using strong air spray to glue the turf and scatter to the hedgerow. This is just a quick demonstration, but, so I didn't spend long, but uh, you can get some quite nice results. And now for your weather. Strong winds and high tides are expected to lash the east coast. Quick, quick, evacuate the quarry. Flipping heck, that came in quick, and they weren't wrong. Don't worry, I'm not modelling uh, high tide at Watchit Harbour. Right, moving swiftly on. Someone a while back commented that using plaster cloth was very messy. And it could be said that my idea of using big pieces of cloth soaked in plaster is equally as messy. Well, if you want, just get rid of the plaster altogether. After all, papier mache has been around for hundreds of years and we all know that layers and layers of paper and paste set solid and is very strong. So instead of uh, plaster cloth, let me introduce to the modelling world paste cloth. That's right, paste and cloth, or I presume cloth mache. OK, call it thinking outside the box, call it radical, call it controversial but it seems to work and it appears to be an option just mix wallpaper paste together and you can add some uh, PVA glue if you wish and you can also add some paint now I'm just using J cloths someone else was using J cloths but they called them something else oh I think it was Dan Dan cleaning rolling stock wheels that's right but I'm using uh, J cloths, I'm just soaking them in the uh, paste as you can see and laying them over the landscape. And it seems to work out alright and is pretty strong. The only downside was that it seemed to take days and days to properly dry, probably because of the shrink wrap underneath retaining the moisture. The test piece done over a bowl went in the oven and quickly dried and was pretty rigid. So there's another possible option you might like to keep in mind and possibly experiment with sometime. So we better leave it there. 
I will try and continue my look into how cloth can be used in modelling in the next few days. Many thanks to all the new subscribers, that's always appreciated. And remember, if you do subscribe and want updates when new videos are posted, remember to click the little cogwheel next to the subscribe banner. I hope you found something helpful, or better still, interesting. And as always, many thanks for watching.